Hey everybody, you're very welcome back to a Skogok Mark. I'm Joe Price and behind the camera is Ida Olsen. Hello everyone. Today we were just out for a hike in our backyard and we just wanted to jump on and shoot some videos. I found a, a very good stick and one of the most requested videos I get asked for is uh, feather stick videos. Everybody loves to try feather sticks and it's a great way to create kindling when you're out and about in the woods, especially when you're in terrain like this. Even though snow can be a bit troublesome to find wood, you can find good wood. And hopefully today during this video, I'll show you how to run through all the techniques to create the perfect feather stick. So once you've found your stick, something about thumbs length, you have to prepare your stick, see if your stick is okay. An awful lot of people jump into feather sticks um, just picking up any stick off the ground full of knots maybe it's a bit damp and there's ways that you can tell these things like for example if your curls are coming off big and they're not starting to roll chances are that it's either too green or too damp so how you can tell that it's nice and dry is you can just shave off a bit of the bark I take my knife out here get a nice chest lever grip going on and we can take it off and you can see that, that bark is coming off nice and you can shave it around Oh, it's a nice chunk coming off there. I can tell this is going to be a good stick already. But once you've got your feather stick kind of prepared, you can see now that there's no greenness in the flame or the inner bark that's on there. Next of all, just like if you were preparing a bow drill set, you want to see and put your fingernail into it. You can see my fingernail leaves a score mark on it there. So that means that it's nice and soft and ready to rock. Another great way to check for dampness is to just hold it against your cheek. If it feels cold, chances are there's still a bit of moisture in the wood, but your first few curls should tell you straight away what's going on there. So I'm just going to prepare this a little bit more, and then we can get around onto the other knee and show you some techniques. So here we have the core position that I like to use. There's several ways to make a feather stick and whichever way works for you, works for you. Once it's nice and safe and creates the curls you want, that's all that matters at the end of the day. But this is the technique that I've found that just works repeatedly and is a little bit more relaxed. Like uh, Bill Gates always said, if you want to find somebody to do the perfect job the fastest way, find the laziest person. And this is the <laughs> laziest way that I can find. I'm sitting on a stump, I got a beautiful view behind me, my knees ain't in the ground, I'm not having to cock and hold the stick as I would do with a bigger knife and bigger techniques so we'll work our way through it but today I'm just working with the typical kind of bushcraft Scandinavian knife and a nice relaxed technique I'm in no real hurry today it's not a major survival situation I'm just having fun in the woods so once I got myself all nice and set up like when you're using tools on a construction site or you're building craft projects at home you want to use your core strength and keep yourself as stable as possible so when I, what a common mistake I see most people doing is their feather stick is too short. They'll hold it here and then they'll try and get this, this kind of draw going on and you get that kind of squirrel eating pine cone effect going on down the bottom. But utilizing my core strength, give yourself another 100% of what you plan on feather sticking should your stick allow it, but at least give yourself another 100%. That way you can get a firm hold, be nice and straight and you can draw across your entire body. You see the only thing that's moving here is my arm. Now if it's down here, I'm gonna be crooked, I'm gonna be lopsided, you wanna keep everything straight. So once I got my 100% extra stick, this is probably one of the best tips you can take away from this video in all your feather sticking techniques. Next of all, I wanna use my leg. I'm staying outside of the blood triangle, staying nice and, nice and tidy out here on the outside of the tie. I'm using the crook of my knee, here, to secure the stick in between. So this is gonna give me a good, you can see, solid draw across there. I'm not trying to support my own wrist like you see on the outside of the knee technique with the bigger knives. I got it here and I got my wrist here and I can lock it all in and I can draw nice big curls across there, hopefully. <laughs> nice big curls across there. Secondly, you see I've prepared my stick. The stick is prepared in channels or chamfers like you would see spoon carvers. And don't forget you can save all this bark as it comes off to help your tinder bundle as it starts in your fire. But once you've got these nice chamfers, you can start to create your feather stick using these techniques. So here I have my typical four inch blade that most of us would use outside in the woods, whether it's a mora or a field and steel special like I'm using today, it doesn't really matter. But your knife should have certain features when it comes to making feather sticks. The reason why I like the Garcia is because it has this big sweep. So this big sweep is absolutely perfect for when you're making feather sticks. It's one of the things I love most about Steers knives is this continuous sweep that you find in the blade 
found on other knives too, but that's why I choose this one for my day hiking wood crafting. The reason why is because when you pull, when you lock your arm in straight and you pull down, if your blade is flat across here, say like you're using a more companion or a standard wood lower blade, you have to cock. So when you cock it and pull it, you get these curls that fly off to one edge and you'll see that as we go. But if you have a knife with this sweep in the blade, you're able to hold your hand flat and the blade does the work for you. So we'll get into it. So now I'm gonna pick myself a nice chamfer. And don't be afraid if your first few curls fall off, it's just all getting in there and finding the rhythm. So holding everything steady, and my knife locked into my leg, I can find one of those curls and draw. And you can see I'm getting these beautiful curls and when I make my first one, I just kick it a tiny bit forward and this creates this beautiful shelf because this is what happens when people create curls and they go flying off the edge of the stick. One, it's too much movement going on. You can see if I'm having to draw like this on a curvy stick, I'm gonna pop off the end, fixed and straight, with a continuous draw allows me to do that, but this shelf also allows me to give a bit of a backstop for when I go. Now, if my blade wasn't curved and I wanted to create one of these curls coming up like this, I find a chamfer, I tilt my knife, you see, I can get curls that go the way they need to go. And there's my shelf, there. So I can see I'm hitting a bit of a knot here, so I'm just gonna rotate it, following my chamfers. You're always going to create a chamfer, every time you do it. There we go. Kick him over there. Like that, don't be afraid to get messy. You're just finding the rhythm of the stick. You can see now I'm hitting a few knots and the reason why I'm hitting these knots is because this stick is curved over here. So it's learning to work with the nature that you got. There we go, we're starting to get into the rhythm of it now. Oh, she's a big one. Again, adjust, always adjust. You can always correct for errors as you go. The definition of insanity is to repeat the same thing over and over again, but expect different results. I'm starting to get into the nice soft heartwood now. And as you can see, I'm not stressing. There's no, this ain't no perfect video. This is done in real time. I'm just chasing my chamfers. So when my sticks are falling on the ground, it's okay. Now, I've got a nice few big ones here, and because this is a speed feather stick video, I just want to talk about the anatomy of a feather stick. Some people think curls get the girls, and that's all you need, but it's not. There's more to it than that. You need the little ones up top, the little ones like the medium ones, and the medium ones like the big ones. That's always an important thing to remember. You can get you want to create surface area when you're making a feather stick. So these nice big curls are, are cool. I'll just give them a little bit of a lift up there. Give myself another shelf to work into. You can see this wood is a bit chattery. You want to create surface area, but this is just basically like building a little mini fire. And I got these knife chamfers here, so I'm going to keep continuing in what I'm doing. And you can see I'm trying to start to create the smaller, lighter ones. myself another shelf. As you see I'm not stressing. Some things will fall off, some things will stay. There we go. So you can see if your curls were coming off completely straight and you're not getting this finesse here on the top, chances are your wood is a is a little dry. There we go. So just stay with your stick. Believe in it. You've made the right choice, you'll, you'll get there. As you can see, I'm using the full draw of the stick now, getting these smaller, more medium curls, using the tip of my knife, and everything locked into place. So you can see building up a nice set of medium ones. Let's try over here. You can see I'm still getting some bits falling off as I'm hitting that knot. There we go. So I'm gonna keep enjoying this view and enjoy building 
my curls. So now I've made it down to the pit wood. One thing I don't see many people do with feather sticks is I take the 90 degree spine of my knife and I shave down some of that wood like a spoke shave and you can see I got some fine, fine shavings in here. Then I like to use that shelf or you can place it down a little bit further in your tinder or in your feather stick and you can light it that way. And there we go. Job's a good one. Hold it up into the wind. Ooh, there we go. And you'll see that's just start to work our way up. Small into medium, medium into big. And that is successful feather stick. So there you go folks, that's the, the lazy man's way of sitting down and making a feather stick while with a view. Again, this is just a, a lunch fire when we're out and about. There's several different techniques that you can use to make feather sticks, whether it's the one that I use or whether it's in front of the knee or in a stump, there's more than one way to skin a cat. But the most important thing is to pick one way and practice with it. And practice it over and over again until you get to receive the results that you want. All techniques will give you the same thing, but there's some universal truths to what we just went through here in the video. So I'll just recap them really quickly. Always remember to pick a stick that gives you 100% more than the area that you want to make curls on. So if you've got 30 centimeters here, have 30 centimeters up here to be able to utilize the entire upper body and stay as stationary as possible. When you're making a feather stick, you want repeatability. That's how you get these curls. You want to just repeat and repeat and repeat. So whatever way you choose to lock it up, that's fine. Make sure you choose a good stick, something about thumb size or thicker. Remember our rule of thumb in the woods will work out fine. Shave the bark off and if it's green in the flame or the inner bark, it's no good. If the curls don't come off with this little pigtail at the top, chances are the wood is still a little bit too fresh. If it starts to chatter on the way down, like my stick did a little bit here, chances are it might be a little too seasoned. But you should be able to feel that. Check for the softness of the stick first using your nail. Again, our thumb is our, it's what helped us evolve and it's our best thing in the woods. Press your thumbnail into it to see if you get those indents. If it's nice and soft and you can indent it, chances are it's good to be for a feather stick. This will also help you in your journey on friction fire later on in the woods should you be gone, because this is also a great method for choosing a hardboard for your bow drills. This would have made an absolutely brilliant spindle. Then prepare your stick. Take the bark off the outside of it, check for that green inner bark that we were talking about. If that's there, no good. Turn it over, get yourself locked into position. When you start to make your first curl, if you don't get these pigtails coming off the front, again, chances are you're working with a bit of green wood. When you start, start with your curls get the girls. You got your big ones down here, your medium ones here, and your little ball of fluff up here in the middle. Always work on one side of the stick. Just because like you've seen in there, you could have a chatter piece here, you could have a knot over here. So once you get your flow and you feel it going, just stay there and work off. And this flat surface will help you later on when you choose to go and ignite it. Especially when you get to the pit wood, like you can see, I take my knife and I like to scrape a bit of fluff all up in here to give me that fine material for when I choose to hold my ferro rod and strike into the material there. And that should get your feather stick going. It's a feather stick 101 class, but I hope the universal truths ring true regardless of your technique. And this is just one of my favorite ones. Nice and comfy, with a good view, getting ready to light a fire to have some coffee. So join us in the next video. If there's any techniques that you'd like to see, drop them in the comments below. Tell me what you think, tell me what your method is. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Peace.